Hey guys, Dilo from The Stuff of Legend here. I just wanted to let you know that the video you're about to watch was an Instagram live interview on my Instagram, The Stuff of Legend Show, with Colin Bass, aka Colin the Blur, who plays the Reverse Flash in Reverse Flash Origins, a web series produced by Nerdbot that he stars in and writes. He is a writer, he is an actor, and he has many, many projects he is working on right now to bring you and me the best fan content we have seen so far. You guys, check him out, and the links will be in the description for all of his social media and all the projects he's working on right now, including Sisterhood Arrow. There's a lot of Power Rangers content he's working on, but without further ado, let's go ahead and talk to Colin Bass, aka Colin the Blur, from Reverse Flash Origins about the projects he's working on right now and what you can get excited about coming up in the near future. Let's get into this. Hey everybody, David Marietta, what's up my dude? Kayla, how's it going? Juan, Juanito, everybody? Just checking in, seeing how everybody's doing. Colin the Blur is in the house. Hey buddy. Colin, what's up? Hey man, can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay on that side, can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. All right, wonderful. Dude, it's so great to get to see you in person. Uh, me too, I'm gonna adjust my angle just a little bit. There we go. Is that a little better? Yeah, perfect. Is mine okay? Yeah, yours is great. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm happy to be here, man. Thank you for inviting me. Dude, absolutely, man. I was I was so excited when I saw that um, one of your posts, I think it was uh, maybe Amber Myers, someone I've interviewed on the channel before that is, was, is campaigning to play Batgirl in the DCEU. Um, huge supporter of that. Love her, uh, love her campaign. I think she's awesome for that. But I think she had shared a post of yours I think it was, and then I had saw that, I was like, holy cow, this is, I didn't know that, because I, I had stopped watching The Flash for a little bit, but I was like, I didn't know that they did episodes on The Reverse Flash. I was like, what? This is so cool. <laughs> and then it, it took me a minute to realize it wasn't official CWDC, you know? I was like, holy cow, dude, this is some good work you're doing out here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah, I actually, I met Amber for the first time on Saturday at Nerd Expo. She came to our panels and I just introduced her because uh, I want to bring her in on some of our projects and she's just amazing. So that's really cool. She's the one that brought us together because you're awesome too, dude. Thank you very much. <laughs> dude, thanks. I appreciate that. Well, you know, I was, I was really excited. Um, I, before we get into some of the questions about the projects that you're actively doing right now, um, I want our, our listening audience to be able to get to know you a little bit. And this will be an opportunity for me to get to know you a little bit on a personal level too. I'm really excited for this. But Colin, um, first question, I guess, uh, is where are you from? Uh, born and raised in San Diego, California. Awesome, dude. So you're a SoCal guy. I am. I am. Yeah. I, uh, I work maybe 10 minutes from where I grew up. And then um, I've just kind of bounced around city to city in, in North County, uh, San Diego. Okay. Awesome, dude. Um, I, uh, I, 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 you, you said that you work um, down there as well. On your social media, I found that you, you work at a costume company. Yeah. Um, that's pretty cool, man. I mean, a lot, I've seen some of your posts and a lot of the stuff that when you go to an expo or an event, your costume is probably one of the, like when you walk around at a Comic-Con or a fan, you know, fan convention, there's always some people you're like, I got to stop and get a picture with this guy because their <laughs> costume is 10,000% legit. Mm -hmm. The pictures you were posting are that, like they're that quality. But that was one of the things that drew me to your to your content on your YouTube was like, holy cow, this looks legit, like Thank so you, man. perfect movie quality, man. Um, but you got you probably had a hand in maybe some of the designs of the of the stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's kind of been a, a long process of us starting with only a flip camera. I don't know if you remember those. They're the little squares that filmed at like 720p or something. And yeah. then back then, uh, there was no like legit costumes out there it was kind of just buying stuff from target and trying to make it look better and then one thing led to another mm -hmm. and we did a couple web series and i went in for my job interview at ruby's and we they what i do is like product development and licensing and there is some creativity okay. in that but it, it's a lot of just like getting things created and then 
you know, sold around the world. But I went in for my interview and uh, I had no experience in what they wanted me to do, but I had a tablet of me and all my different costumes from the different web series and stuff. And they hired me on the spot. Yeah. So it, it all worked out. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's so legit, man. I, and you, you have worked on quite a few web series at this point um, and are currently working on a lot as well. So you have a day, you have a job that you attend to at, you said Ruby's. Yeah. And, and you're also constantly working on these projects. Um, how many projects are you working on right now? Well, there's some that I'm more involved in than others, but uh, I think I, I have my, my foot in the water, for lack of a better term, in about five different projects. And I'm, I'm writing a few of them and acting in most of them, but uh, Nerdbot and my best friend and business partner, Sean, we just, we kind of like do one idea and then just kind of move on to the next one. And we're like, I just want to try this, you know? And, and uh, I, the thing that is, so addicting is like you, you're bringing together all these fans that you know want to see these ideas you have in your head. So uh, yeah, yeah. We, we have a lot of eggs in a lot of different baskets. But I I took a year off of filming one year and I just felt empty. So the more the more busy mm -hmm. I am with these projects, it's just it's the best. Yeah, totally. I know what you mean, man. Like you, like when you when you have a bunch of ideas and you just want to you want to start to turn those out. That's it, it. It boils inside of you if you don't do something creatively to make those things come alive. It's, it's very like, what I do is very different, obviously with the YouTube, I'm kind of keeping up almost like a John Campia style. Like here's the movie news, do a little bit of fan casting. Dude, I see you, man. You're hustling. I can see the content you're putting out and how much like you're reaching out, making these connections and uh, mad respect for you, man. Hey, well, thanks, man. I, I appreciate it. But that, I, the stuff that I do, I've said, I said this in my interview with Leanna Ramirez, I was, the stuff that I do on my content, it, it is 100% reliant on the stuff that people like yourself make, where you're the, you're the content creators, and I'm kind of someone that in, is enthused by that content, someone that is rallied and excited by that kind of content. So, man, I, I can't tell you how exciting it was for me when I, when I started watching your series. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so cool, because there's not a lot of story behind the reverse flash, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm making it all up, but I'm doing a lot of fan service. So uh, I'm glad I'm really glad yeah. you appreciate it. And it just means a lot. You can watch them all in a row. I don't know if I can even do that. So I'm glad you like it. <laughs> yeah, totally. I straight I straight binge the whole thing. And like, I think it was like two days. Um, yeah. hey. And it it's cool because they're approximately about 20 minutes an episode, right? Uh, the finale, I think was our 20 minute mark, but we try to uh, aim around 10 to 15. But the finale, I just had so much to put in there that we just went yeah. for a long and gave a recap and everything. So it hit the 20 minute mark. And people kept asking for longer episodes too. So we gave yeah. what they wanted. Yeah, and there's a, there's a lot that goes into every single minute of, the, of that content. It's several camera angles and the, the amount of time it takes to not only write the story, but to come up with like the exact script you want to go with and get the costumes right, the lighting right, angles. And I mean, there, there's a ton. Production is a big deal. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Pre-production, then actually filming it all in a weekend, and then post-production. It's it's a huge thing, and uh, we're doing it with just, like, you know, what we have, what we got. And a lot of passionate people come together and, you know, have this costume or have these abilities to act and portray and help us out or, you know, behind the camera. And it's 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 all a big team effort. But, yeah, it takes a, it takes a long time to get it done, especially without a budget to – to like have our backs. So we all have to have each other's backs. Yeah. You know? <laughs> totally, man. And you, you mentioned, you mentioned before, like you are, you're not just the star of the series. You write the stories. You're the writer of this project. Yeah. Uh, I, I came up with the idea after a failed, um, I, I say failed it just because it didn't come out, but it was a nightwing series called Bloodhaven, And we finished, right. we got, we're like 90% done with the first episode. Then it just kind of didn't go anywhere. And then Elvin, owner of Nerdbot, is like, hey, Ben, do you want to like, try to finish this Nightwing thing or do you want to do something else? And I said, what if Reverse Flash wasn't always evil? Like, what if it was kind of like an Anakin Skywalker or Lex Luthor from Smallville where he <laughs> is evil and you know he's going to be evil, but th he does things that kind of gives you hope that there's still some good in him. And I try to portray that in the episodes. Yeah, exactly. You get it. <laughs> I didn't yeah, even I know you were going to, I didn't even know you were going to mention that, but. Lex Luthor from Smallville is my freaking jam. 
That's and why it's, I like, like RFO because I take a lot from that where he, he would do some really evil stuff and one good thing and you're like, ah, oh, Lex, I, I still like you. <laughs> yeah, totally. And he's, he really was, um, I think, the heart of this series because it all kind of hinged on where Superman is going at the end. But you know from the very first, from the pilot episode, that Lex is the ultimate enemy of, of, of uh, Clark Kent. Mm -hmm. But... You know, you see him in the and throughout the whole thing, he gave he gave Lex a heart. He yeah. he showed that what that there really was a person behind the 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 master of of evil and deception and all that stuff. And yeah. he was he was the guy. He was the king. But it started somewhere. And you know, from that darkness, he shows. Oh my gosh, he was someone that you could empathize with at one point. At one exactly. point, you could sympathize. And you guys did that. You did that specific. You did that so well with um, Reverse Flash with thank Eobar. You, man. I, that's exactly what I was going for. So thank you. From one small little fan to another, that means a lot. Heck yeah, dude. Uh, I, I don't know if you caught recently, but the uh, the next Crisis of Infinite Earth um, cro CW crossover, they've got Clark Kent and and they got Lois coming back. Yes, I'm so happy. I I, I like sent it to my dad because we grew up. That was like our one show we watched together. He's not nerdy at all. But he liked small right. stuff. And I was like, guess who's coming back? And I sent him the announcement. And he was just like, wow, I will actually tune in for that. <laughs> yeah, dude. It, 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 they, a lot of people have been speculating online that that kind of fan service, is, it's, a, it's a gimmick. It's something that's just there to draw the fans. But it's it drawing is. the fans. They were there. I was <laughs> it, there 100, not only does it work, but the heart of it is that it's, that's what the fans want. Fan service is there to serve fans. Mm -hmm. And if you give fans what they want, they're happy. You know, that's why Marvel has done such a good job in live action. And it took up to recently for DC to catch on with that in live action. Right. You know, because it was, just, it took a while for them to, you know, get on board, get one guy there. They need to find their Kevin, Kevin Feige. And I think it's, it's that kind of, um, if you have a, a one track mind, and I think you might, are you the exclusive writer of the, the Flash series? Um, yeah, I mean, I have to get it reviewed with by our director and producer and like the effects guy in case I'm writing something we can't do. But yeah, I write the episodes. Right. Uh, Lexi helped me on this last one. And that was fun. Okay. Was the first time I ever did any co writing. But for Sisterhood Arrow, I'm going to be co writing with uh, Jen. And she just uh, uh, we wrote a script together already. And we just vibed really well. We agreed with each other. And, and she brings out like, you know, strong, um, female presence in the dialogue and then i kind of just yeah read, like realistically what we can do and we just uh, mm -hmm. I, I had a blast yeah co-writing was really fun i'll do that so i'm so excited and can you explain to the fans what sisterhood the gist of sisterhood arrow without kind of uh i guess spoiling stuff yeah uh it's basically a gender swapped dc universe we're not really following the comics or the Arrowverse. we're kind of doing that style of like the leather and realistic kind of thing but we're really we're we're flipping the gender, the genders, and we're doing stories that we've never really seen be done before. Kind of like Reverse Flash Origins or uh, right. our Power Rangers series. It's all stuff that like has kind of like you've wondered about, and then now we're doing this whole series where uh, Green Arrow and Deathstroke, both girls, right, uh, to team up together to save Ravager, which is now a man. So mm -hmm. it's it's like two enemies working together out of necessity, and I think it's gonna be really really interesting, and uh, I'm just super excited for it. But we we're kind of picking only gender neutral names, so we don't have to explain like that's Batman woman, you know. So right, uh, yeah. it'll be like Green Arrow, Deathstroke. I play uh, the male version of Black Canary, Black Condor, and okay. things like that, where it's all gonna be those kind of names like that. Awesome, dude. That sounds like a ton of fun, and. I, I really liked uh, when I saw the trailer. I was, I was again, I was blown away. It looks so much fun. Um, the sets look really cool. I really like, you know, it, it looks like a you, you took a piece of Arrow season one <laughs> and really like really grabbed a hold of it and just created something that is new, is your own. And I think the gender swap thing, when it's across the board and all characters are flipped, is a ton of fun because that feels like an Elseworlds type of thing. Exactly. Yeah, and we're having a blast with it already. And I just can't wait to see where it goes. I think it's going to be a really like encompassing thing where people will just want to get involved because it's the interesting idea. And then we can just kind of 
do things I've never been done before. And then we're still kind of real with it kind of staying grounded around, you know, Green Arrow and uh, Green Arrow and uh, Deathstroke. We're not like going to have, you know, Kryptonians flying around and, and stuff. So yeah, be, like realistic, but we're gonna have a lot of fun and stretch our imaginations as DC fans, you know, totally. And that's, that that's the kind of stuff that I'm all about, you know, like, like, uh, another another crew that I think a lot of us are, are big fans of is Bat in the Sun. Oh, yeah. And they, they take a lot of liberties in that same direction where they, they don't follow a, a particular script that's pre written, they create their script based on concepts that we all know and love and give us that kind of fan service, which I think is that that's one of the reasons why they've gotten so big is because they understand as fans themselves, what fans want to see. And that's something that I think you you have that I, I can see from the trailer, Sister of the Arrows, really, un, they really, you guys really understand that. Um, in order to get to know you, uh, I wanted to circle back and ask you a couple more personal questions. Okay. Um, what, so with the costuming, a lot, I've seen you do a lot of, I guess, I guess you would call it cosplay, but you're not really a cosplayer. You just make super legit costumes and show them off at, at cons. To, to be honest, man, I I really only dress up for film now. I mean, it it, it started as a, it was always like film first, then the costumes kind of just went with it because I'm a big nerd and I wanted to do superhero stuff. And then we use mm -hmm. this kind of like a, I'd say marketing tool where you know I dress up and I pass out cards like, hey, check out our web series, you know that kind of thing. But no, I also don't sure. really make anything. I I can customize and I can envision it and maybe like piece things together. But, um, and there's nothing, I'm not saying anything bad about cosplay at all. I just don't consider myself a cosplayer anymore. I'm really just right. like, diving into acting and writing and even um, just like kind of just creating content, whether it's like memes or videos or things like this. Like, this is what I love doing. I don't, I don't really like dressing up and going to cons, but I'll do it if it like yeah. helps the project, basically. Totally. Yeah. And, I, I've done I've done a ton of that as well. Like where I'm not I am not a cosplayer. I don't actively, um, you know, I, that's not that's not one of my pursuits. But you know, like when Avengers came out, everybody was dressing up for it. You go to a, a Comic Con and you always either wear some sort of like nerdy shirt or you go oh, in yeah. some sort of either super legit or or an attempt at a legit <laughs> costume. In my I case, think, yeah, I think I wear something nerdy every day. Like I'm rocking Reverse Flash. This is my Air Ninja hat. For, for Power Rangers first Ninja. Was even a little oh, heck cool. yeah. So like, I've always got something subtle nerdy on me, but yeah, exactly. I, I just don't consider myself a cosplayer, but there's, I'm totally support it. And see, I have that hat. I actually have the exact same yeah. hat. That's awesome. They were selling it at a Hero Villain Fan Fest up here. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm in uh, the Silicon Valley in San Jose. Uh, so I'm in Northern California. Oh, okay, cool, very cool. I've been to San Jose. Yeah. I forgot what the con was, but I've I've been there and I I loved it. That was awesome. Yeah, probably Silicon Valley Comic Con or maybe Hero <laughs> Villain Fan Fest. That I think it might have been that one. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's a lot. Of Those are the two big ones. ones. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, for sure, dude. It's uh really exciting. I like that hat, by the way. Do you sell that? Uh, Nerdiest Brands does. Yeah, they're they're uh one a very good friend of ours, but they also are a sponsor for our Power Rangers thing. We got they, okay. They gave us one hat for each ranger, so we want a big picture of us with our ranger hats on, but we just haven't been together yet. But yeah, they're great. You Dude, that pack is sick. They got like every season, so definitely check out Nerdiest Brands. I can, I'll, I'll send you a link after we hang up. Heck yeah, dude. Yeah, I'll put that in the description. <laughs> <laughs> um, with uh, um, So then how did, as an as a actor and a writer, I wanted to ask, um, when did you kind of realize you, you had this kind of a, a passion, gift, talent, uh, or that you wanted to start going in this direction? Like, when did you start writing? And how did you start acting as well? Um, well, when I was a kid, I went to, like, some acting camps and did plays. And, like, uh, I remember summers I'd go to, like, Disney acting and uh, youth theater and stuff like that. But then, like, one thing led to another, and I went, like, the full jock route in life where I was, like, the football guy and the pep commissioner dude. Like, like and it wasn't really me. I was, like, a big nerd, and I, I guess I – and there was like a digital video class and I loved making videos, but uh, mm -hmm. I guess I kind of just cared too much about what people thought. And I went the football route, even though I, I look back and I wish I would have gone, you know, the theater route or acting route or something. Right. And then in college, I got a, a job uh, as a, 
digital media director for this comic book company and I had no digital media. I didn't know what to do. So I bought a flip cam and I was kind of just like trying to learn actually the, the blur super speed effect for uh, Smallville. That was my first thing. I was like trying to learn how to do that. And then I was like, I think I'll make some videos. I don't know what they're going to be. One thing yeah. after another, Sean and I teamed up and we started doing web series and then with the fan films and like a con coverage and blah, blah, blah. And then as people started watching our stuff and people took us more seriously, I realized I loved writing and I loved acting and I wish I would have been doing it my whole life. So that was around mm -hmm. the year 2012. And then I just, I've never stopped except for that year. I told you I took off, but everything else, right. man, it's, just, it's kind of been snowballing and uh, I love it. I'm, I'm just always thinking about what's next, you know, what's, what the next move is and what the next idea is. And it's just so great to be alive in a time where the nerdy stuff we love is so accepted and mainstream and successful. So yeah, that's, that's the short yeah. version of my journey. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome, man. I mean, I, I, I had a similar experience. Like I, I had taken um, out of out of, I guess, uh, self imposed necessity, I wanted to get my grades up in high school. So junior senior year, I decided I was going to take an acting class because I figured oh. that's gonna be really easy. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up love it like junior year, I fell in love with acting. I was like, holy dang, this is so much fun. I, I've never had more fun in school ever. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I was like, my two, my two favorite classes were weightlifting and, and acting. And I, that was it. That was like all I cared about. And, um, and so I, I did that for a bit and I was actually in a few commercials and some fun Ooh, stuff. Cool. Um, I, I was in a music video that like won a, uh, I forgot what it's called, like Rapzilla award in 2014 or something like that. Sweet. But, um, it was, uh, it, it ended up being that I, I chose a different, a different path, but it was, it was something that. Man, I think a lot of people don't realize if you're willing to try something new, you may not find what you 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 end up being good at, you know. Absolutely. And same same with like a, a, a simple pursuit or a hobby. In my case, like acting helped me come into uh, sales, and that's what I actually do for my job is I'm in sales. Oh. Okay. Um, but and that helped me like kind of unlock my personality, connect to other people better. Um, but in this case, you know, like now I've got I've got some. Uh, knowledge and skills about, I guess, the film industry, and that's something I've been obsessed with since Spider-Man One with Tobey Maguire. You oh, know, and that's like, changer. oh, dude. So I've got so much love and respect for like some of that. I guess you you call it older. It's early two thousands, but yeah. you know, I love that. I love that kind of content. And I know you do too. You've got a oh, lot of absolutely. um, like two thousands content. For I gotta say. You picked a great series of Power Rangers, by the way, to, to do a lot of your content on. Ninja Storm is the sickest. Right? I, I love Ninja Storm. Me too, man. Uh, my favorite's Dino Thunder, but Ninja Storm. Uh, yeah. I was like, so that was like 04, I think. And I was, I felt way yeah. too old to be watching it, but I was like secretly watching it like when no one was around. I love yeah. Ninja Storm. And then, um, but then Dino Thunder came along and I, Dino Thunder is still my number one. But uh, yeah, the way right. Ninja Storm, the way First Ninja even happened uh, was I went to uh, Morphicon and I went to the fan film panel. And I'm sure you're familiar with Blurred Vision and Unworthy, the Power Rangers project. Uh, yeah, they, yeah. They won the fan film competition and I'm there in the audience just like, I want to do that, man. I want to be a Power Ranger. So yeah, we, we get out of the fan film panel and I'm texting Sean. I was like, dude, we got to do something Power Rangers. Hear me out. And not like the rubber monsters, no megazords. Like, what if we do something that's like less about Power Rangers and more about ninjas and elements and, you know, where we got these powers from, blah, blah, blah. And right. I just I started just piecing it together in my head. And I was in this room full of like Ranger cosplayers. And I just go, guys, would you be down? to watch a show that shows how the when ninja academy got started and then everyone's like whoa yeah and then we just ran with it and then uh we couldn't film for a while because it was snowing up in big bear where we filmed so then i came okay. up with the idea for shattered pass a time traveling power rangers show and uh then that led to the idea of like what if this character could access other weapons it all just kind of like felt like meant to be but yeah man ninja storm was sweet and it uh, it all kind of happened out of necessity i just wanted to get it going and that seemed like the most grounded uh realistic thing that we could do so i just i went for it and i'm i, I love ninja storm and it's 
it's so cool being able to tell, you know, a fake story, but like an origin story for a show that I love. Totally, man. I, I really liked, um, l like you said, it, it doesn't incorporate a lot of like monsters and rubber suits. It's most, but it, it dives into the powers that that particular set of rangers had by like as, as kind of their biology. I mean, once yeah. they, they become rangers, they can use powers outside of their armor, outside of powering up. They don't have to morph to have those abilities. Yeah. And that's one of the cool things that Ninja Storm did so well. And, and Dino Thunder did that as well, too. Mm -hmm. um, but they had, you know, power of earth, power of wind, power of water. Then the Brothers Th of Thunder and um, then you get the Green Samurai. They had skills that were accessible before they morph. Exactly. And uh, you guys kind of turned that and you take you took that story and said, you know what? That almost feels like Avatar The Last Airbender. Like that kind of feels like this could be something as grand as the Avatar series combined with the the absolute savagery of, of what is Power Rangers and morphing <laughs> yeah, and exactly. you know the bright colors and the epic fight scenes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The the elements is what drew me in, but um just like kind of doing it about like ninjas elementals aliens and then on top of that is power rangers and it's just like it, it, it's it's really cool to write it's really cool to act in and i think it's um just something that's never explained before like 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 you said is it biology were they born with these element powers were they chosen blah blah, blah. and i'm kind of making it like a curse like they're like I've got, I got exiled from the Academy because I'm an elemental and it's going to start as a bad thing. And then it's going to end up being this really great thing. When, when my character Jackson starts the school and everyone's there like, Hey, we're going to master our powers. We're going to protect the world from people like that. And then that's like, you know, the bad guys. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, it had a really cool start to that show, man. I love that. The Was it the pilot or the first episode that is on your, I think it's your Crimson, uh, Crimson Vision Studios YouTube page. Yeah, we have a we have a full episode out, and then the second one's filmed. It's just uh, like like we said, post production takes a while. It's an effect heavy episode, but yeah, our first right. episode is out, and that's like setting everything up. And then two is basically done, and then uh, on three, I'm thinking I'm gonna end it. It's gonna, so it's gonna be episode one is Earth, episode two is Air, and episode three is gonna be Water. And if the fans rally and want us to do more, we'll totally do more. But that's my plan for now. Heck yeah, dude. Well, you have my vote. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah. And anyone who wants to see that, make sure to let Colin know because holy cow, dude. If you haven't seen it, check it out on Crimson. It's Crimson Studio, Crimson Vision Studios, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. So on YouTube, Crimson Vision Studios, you can check out um, the Power Rangers. Uh, it's called First Ranger or uh, First? So it's Power Rangers First Ninja. And then we have another Ninja coming out called Power Rangers Shattered Past. And uh, yes. So those are going to be quick, fast episodes, lots of fan service, different rangers each episode. But First Ninja is going to be more of an epic story that's all going to come together. And it's just a way bigger mm -hmm. cast, and, and it just takes longer. But we were so eager to get more stuff out. We did Shattered Past. Right. And, you're at, and again, simultaneously working on not only Sisterhood Arrow, but the Reverse Flash Origins at the same time. Yeah, I'm a crazy person, dude. Yeah, and, and, uh, it's just keeping busy, brother. Yeah, it. The thing is, is like all these different films and projects all lead to amazing opportunities and people, like like meeting you and meeting Amber and like like the, the doors that open make it so worth it to me. You know, I'm I'm not I, I've I've never like done the Kickstarter or anything. I'm not saying I'm against it. But I've never really like asked for money. I've just kind of like created it and then use that momentum to to build a bunch of bridges that I can come back to and I, some of my best friends are through film and lots of lots of my favorite moments in my life have been because of film so I mm -hmm. uh, the more projects the more great opportunities keep happening so I'm just going to do it until I'm an old power ranger I guess <laughs> heck yeah and what kind of, and that's the best kind of legacy I think is to you look back in your life and say, I lived as a Power Ranger, you know? <laughs> yeah. how, how awesome is that? That's the kind of future that kids grow up wanting. <laughs> yeah, I have this little little nephew, his name's Bear. He's a big superhero fan. And yeah. he's too young to like really, you know, understand the stories or anything, but I'll just show him like a quick more for a super speed scene. And he's like, is that real? And I'm like, it's like the movies. And he's like, can you do it right now? And I was like, mm -mm, it's a secret. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's awesome. And so uh, I take it your nephew probably is privy to a lot of uh, spoilery content that maybe other people aren't. 
yeah, yeah, I do show him sneak peeks, and he's got some favorites. He, he, I still don't have the heart to tell him that Reverse Flash is evil. He's he like has <laughs> yeah. his own Flash costume, and I and right. he's like he's like so are are you like my sidekick? And I'm like yeah, I'm like your sidekick. But then uh, <laughs> he saw like a clip of me punching Flash from episode five, and he goes, "Why are you hitting? Why are you hitting Flash?" And I was like, "Oh, we just got into an argument. It's okay though. We're still friends." <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We made up after the scene. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I love that, man. Um, I uh, okay. So, what what is your uh, what is your favorite role, or I guess hat that you wear? I mean, you you do a lot. You are involved in the in the overall production. You're a writer. You're an actor. If you if you had to pick one of those as a favorite, what would you say is is your favorite role? Man. I used to always say writer because like, I love like being able to, you know, make what goes on here onto paper and then onto the visual satisfaction. But um, I'll tell you, man, when I, when I got to play an original character, which is Jackson, I didn't really have to base it off anyone. And uh, I love playing Eobard. I love like how crazy he gets and it feels good to kind of scream and like kick, <laughs> kick butt, you know, but Jackson yeah. really made me feel more comfortable in my skin as an actor. And I just mm. got to, I like, I got to create this character on paper and then I just improv a lot more as Jackson than I do anywhere else. So to answer your question, right. I was Ryder, but then because of these original characters where there's no limitations on me, uh, I just really dove into acting and I had a blast this last time filming First Ninja where I, I would do something and then Sean would be like, all right, cut. And I was like, can we keep that? Can I do that again? And then we just like kind of added more jokes into it. And I'm not a very funny guy but Jackson is. And I think that's really changed the game for me. Yeah, totally. That's, that's awesome, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's really cool that um, you have that, you have the opportunity to create these roles for yourself and then get the opportunity to, or I rather give yourself the opportunity <laughs> to be that as well. So not only do you create the characters, but then you also bring them to life. I'm sure that, that in itself is a, is a, uh, a, a unique experience you know not a lot of people have that opportunity yeah yeah it's it's great i i do love being in other people's projects too because it's, it's cool i love uh shelton perry he does a uh, teen titans project and yeah. i've done a few i've done a few different videos with him and he's really good like getting inside my mind and he writes everything and then he directs me and usually films and i i love hopping in other people's projects but yeah like you said it is something special where i'm writing it and i was just like how am i going to say that and you'll the days before filming when we go up to LA to film, I'm like in the mirror, like, oh, I'm the fastest man alive, like you know, screaming at myself in the mirror, seeing how I want this to be. But yeah, it's yeah. an awesome experience. But I do love um, acting out other people's visions too. Right on. If you if you had a like a okay, if you had a magic wand, and you could just wish your next role into existence, what would that what would that role be? Dang. Uh, would it be like my full-time job? I mean, it, it absolutely could be. <laughs> it's my wand, right? It's my wish. Okay. Yeah, my yeah. Wish. You know what I think I would like, because I had never done it? I've never been like the the wise mentor, or you know what I mean? Like, like for yeah. example, uh, RJ in uh, Jungle Fury. I always really oh, liked yeah. that guy, because he didn't take himself too seriously, but then he knew he was wise, and he knew how to kick butt, and... So I'd love to yeah. be, I'd love to be something like that. Like I'm too old to be a Power Ranger, at least the way they're doing with teens in high school and stuff. But I'd love right. to like maybe grow out my facial hair and be kind of the wise guy who's who's been a ranger for a while and's like, listen, the thing you need to do, blah blah blah, you know. So that would be my yeah. wish, and I've just always wanted to uh, be in a show like that, anyway. So yeah, yeah, well, that kind of <laughs> totally that kind of functions also kind of like. Uh, Going back to Dino Thunder, that's Tommy Oliver in, in, exactly. yeah. in Dino Thunder. You know, he was the experienced one on the team, and he got to impart that kind of wisdom while going on the journey with the team to the team. Exactly. And Connor is my favorite ranger, and he just had the best character development, of I, I, I think, of all Power Rangers se seasons. He went from, like, this dumb jock who only cared about girls to, like, saving a tree because he believed it was the right thing to do, and then he got his battleizer. So right. yeah, I, and then I think a big part of that was because he had a really great mentor, and that's JDF. I mean Tommy. 
Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> or JDFFFN if you want to yeah. follow him on, on all his social media. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so I guess, I guess then um, the, the, the next question I wanted to ask you was in, in regards specifically to Reverse Flash Origins, this, the production. Um, what was, taking it back to, I guess, the initial inspirations for this project, what was the first time that you um, got to understand, learn about the Reverse Flash as a character? Um, we did a, a costume short for X Coaster, and uh, this was like still like maybe season one or see, yeah, it was still like season one of the Flash. So we didn't really know everything about that Reverse Flash. So I just read the entire Wikipedia page on everything Eobard Thawne related, any any cartoon, comic, uh, the show, anything that was out there. I like digested it all and had to write his kind of origin in in a minute or less, like. My name is Barry Allen. I'm the fastest man alive. I did like, my name is Eobard Thawne and I am the fastest man alive. And then I tried to like briefly tell his story, but that was the first mm -hmm. time I suited up and we used that as an example to go, let's dive into this more. Like why yeah. did I hate the flash? Cause I'd never, I could not find back then they've, they've done it now, but I could not find why he hated the flash so much. It was always, he went back in time and found out that uh, he's going to be the enemy of the flash. <laughs> And I thought that was so lame. So I thought it'd be yeah. cool if it's kind of a misunderstanding, a love interest dies, you know, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. it just, uh, it, it, it all became really clear to me when I couldn't find the information that I needed to write. And then from there, it turned into from a short, then it turned into a, like a teaser we did with NerdBot. And then now we're eight episodes in. So it was all just kind mm -hmm. of like, kind of like kismet, it just like started as not having enough information and then turned into making our own information. And then now we're a million views deep, you know? So it's, it's, it was yeah. just, it all started with that short where I just didn't know it to write. <laughs> that's so cool, man. And it's, that's actually quite inspiring too. If, if like, I, I know there's a, been a number of times in my life where I've tried to get a project started and maybe I, I, I thought, you know what? I don't know how far this is gonna get. And then I just decided, you know what? Maybe I'll work on something else. And I kind of put it to, uh, to the wayside. Yeah. If you if you had done that, you wouldn't be where you are today. You know, like, yeah, uh, you know, like it's just a short or something. No, you put it out and you just said, let's just see where it goes. Let's just see exactly. where it goes. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was kind of, it was all just, it's all still a big learning experience, you know, but it, you have to imagine I, I went from doing this and no one was watching what we were doing, but I just did it because I loved it. And then now people really do care about our projects and our stories and, they even care about me and it just it's so crazy to go from begging people to watch your stuff to you know people going hey when's the next episode and it's just so fulfilling it's just yeah hilarious. that's awesome dude I'm, I'm i'm super happy that that your content is getting recognized i learned about it quite recently and i'm already like dude tell my i told my buddy the other day like oftentimes I'll be like, Hey man, here's the movie news. Here's this and that kind of stuff. And I'm sure that it can be, you know, a little bit much sometimes I can kind of ramble, but with, with him, I was like, dude, and I, I just had your video playing the trailer for the, for season two, episode two, I think it was. Oh, sick. And I had it, I just had it playing on my phone. I was like, dude, check this out. And he's all, he's all, they're doing, they're doing the reverse flash now. Like thinking that it would CW. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I, I just told him at first, I was like, yes, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and I just let him watch the trailer and he's like, wait, is this fan content? And I was like, yes, yeah. <laughs> and it's the best. So you got to check it out now. And he's all, dude, he's like, that's awesome. And I was like, uh, 10 minute episodes, you know, and he was like, totally reeled in. Heck yeah, I'll check it out. So it's super cool, man. Like I, I'm really proud of the work that you're making. It's like, Thank you. I, there's almost a come Like, I feel like, I feel like I get to be part of that because we are fans. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, that's part of the fun too. It's like, we, the fans, we, the people, you know, you are, you're like one of us. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah, dude. We're just, yeah. At the end of the day, we're all just nerds that really love this stuff. And uh, you, mm -hmm. you do it in, in a more like news esque way, which I respect. And I do it in, you know, running around in tights. It's just the way Heck we yeah. express it. So <laughs> that's what's up, dude. Tights all day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And um, and so with the uh, with the reverse flash with Ebard Thon, what is it that makes this character character? 
I guess so enjoyable or so, uh, I, I think for me, mesmerizing, but what is it for you that draws you to the character of Eobard Thawne? I just love how he's fighting his destiny. Like, like mm. I, I, I think there's always a part of us that's kind of like scared of the future. And this guy, the, the version I play, looked at his future self in the eyes and was like, no. And he was like, dude, I'm, I'm you. Like, you're going to become me. And you're, you're going to try to fight it, but you're going to become me. And he was like, no, I'm not going to become you. And there's like glimpses of him going full evil and stuff. But like, even with the Time Masters, he got so mad and he was just like, your plan failed. I'll be the hero. And I think that's what I love about him is he's, he's really headstrong and he's totally doomed, but he's still trying to not become his future self. And I think that's what I enjoy about writing and playing him is I like giving myself and the viewers hope that maybe he will be good in this timeline. Right. But he's it's not. like, he's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We know. It's, it's so, it's so, um, I guess attractive because he's like, not um he we know he's doomed we know he becomes a reverse flash but he's also so head so headstrong so stubborn so determined and we know he is because of how we've seen him when he's evil mm -hmm. that maybe he does fight this or maybe he does stick it through to the you know like how how is this and it's like a, a conundrum in our in the the fans minds i guess it's yeah, you not that's love exactly them. right <laughs> that's exactly what yeah. i'm going for and in the season one finale that that version of him we've seen like a few different versions of eobard and i try to do things with my hair or my costume to make you know it's not the guy we've been watching but that one he's just like dude i've seen like a million timelines and i really like this one because i had hope and i had a girl and i was almost a hero and i care about that timeline and uh, right. he's, this next episode, two is a very big setup, but three is going to be like our mid-season finale. And I just have this plan that's going to just shake the whole show up and change things. Because I feel like we we're kind of getting a little stagnant. And then the timeline broke, and then we fixed the timeline. And then now it's like, all right, what have we been doing this whole time? And it's going to be Eobard trying to be a hero, and future Eobard's going to come back. That's a little spoiler. And uh, that's, I think it's going to be yes. really, really fun. Dude, heck yeah, man. That's a, oh, I, lo I love that. I can't wait now. I mean, when did you say this episode's coming out? Because I'm, I'm all caught up. I'm like on the edge. <laughs> no, not for a while, man. Um, so <laughs> episode two just came out. And uh, we then we have um, uh, Power Rangers is probably our next one. And then we'll probably get to filming when it cools down a little bit more. Because I don't know if right. you saw, I was very sweaty that whole episode. So uh, we'll probably... Right. I, I'm already writing it, so it's definitely going to be this year. I can say that. Awesome, dude. Well, don't don't feel like you have to rush it, but you know, obviously, yeah, you know, we love we love the content. Can't wait for more. Yeah, I'll um, do it every day if I could, but got to do the day job. <laughs> right, and that's that's the that's the amazing thing here is that you again day job, four side hustle like projects. You're going to cons, you know, like that's that's wild, dude. That's a busy busy schedule. Yeah, it's it's the best though, man. It's it's nice having that kind of busy instead of like me wishing I could go do it. We just kind of Sean and I took matters into our own hands and just started doing it. And like I said, lots of really great people and opportunities. It all makes it worth it, even though the I'm a starving artist. But <laughs> it's, the, yeah. it's the it's the relationships and the you know the growing as a person and as an artist. That's that's what makes it all worth it to me. Yeah, and, and I think it's the it's the journey, not necessarily the destination, right? Absolutely, because I don't know my destination. I'm like Eobard. I'm like, huh, I don't know about the future, but I just know it's yeah. I, I know I want to keep creating, and I know I want to, you know, work in this industry. Mm -hmm. Totally. And um, what what if, if you could name like two things? One thing from about Eobard that you love, and one thing about Eobard that you hate. Uh, one thing I love about Eobard. What do I love about him? I love that he's he's passionate, and I I consider myself a pretty passionate person. And when he when he loves, he loves hard, and when he hates, he hates hard. And yeah. I always I always could relate to him on that. And I also sometimes you do just want to like lose it, and he does that like every other episode. He's like, bah! and he like explodes and like screams yeah. and kills or something. So I really like how passionate he is, and 
he loved Jane, man. And it all mm. really screwed his whole perception of himself up. And then now he loves Frost and Frost is gone too now. She's back to Caitlyn. So it's like, mm -hmm. he's going to yeah. have to deal with that. But that's what I really love about him is he's, he, he is really passionate and he feels things he, even though he's a psychopath. He feels them like really hard. And the thing I hate <laughs> is, um, I guess, it, is obsessiveness, I guess. Like, yeah, there's a difference between being passionate and being obsessive. Like, he, he he'll get creepy sometimes you know like, like uh that, and yeah yeah it's all part of the character but I, I love where you know he does really love barry at the end of the day he still loves him even loves bart but he also is like mm -hmm. way delusional and creepy about trying to be the flash and that's one mm -hmm. thing i don't like about him but it's an important part of the character so right it's it's that it's that undying obsession you know that it, it i guess it's a relentless passion that even in the face of uh you know, I guess hazard or doom, it it doesn't quit. You know, and that's a defining trait for the character. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, as far as um, be, playing the role of Ibarthon, what what do you think the biggest challenge was? Take put putting yourself in the role, like playing Ibard. What was the most difficult part of that? I guess I when I first started, I was very scared. To be honest, it was the first thing where we had an actual crew. And we had like a company that was um, doing like promo art and like launching trailers. And like, it was the first time it wasn't just me and Sean running around with the camera. It was like the first yeah. legit thing they're doing. And that scene with uh, Jane in the beginning, um, I was just very scared. I didn't really know how I wanted to take the character and I didn't have much confidence in my acting skills. So I think as the show went on around episode three, where I kind of figured out how I wanted to play him and how I wanted to write him. That was what really got me comfortable in Eobard's skin. But mm -hmm. if you watch episode one, I, I write very safe and my acting is very like reserved and like trying to be safe. And then now right. we're, I'm just like, I, I feel bigger and better as an actor and Eobard, I feel like I really understand who this guy is and who he wants to be. And it's just kind of all been a journey. And I think I always say it, it I learned something new every single episode. And I mm -hmm. try to apply what I learned to Eobard as a person as well. Right. And These do you, do you think that, by the way, I love your questions. You oh, yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, you're, you're making it easy because I, I guess the, the conversation just like as you, as you're giving me these answers, it's just popping into my head. Like, what do I want to know is as the next, a true next thing. Reporter right there. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> totally, man. And uh, thank you. Um, what does it, and I suppose it, it probably helps when being that you are writing the, the character and then you get to put yourself in that skin. You're, you're learning this character, even though it's your character, you're learning the character um, very quickly, uh, very, very fast. Yeah. I, I think that does help when I'm, when I'm writing, I, uh, like, perfect example is episode two i like i wanted bart and eobard to have like a final like climactic battle and i was kind of like i wrote i wrote bart saying what's the point of all this what do you want and then i was like what does he want he wants to be the flash he wants to be a hero so then i wrote in him stealing the ring and because like it all happened right in that moment where i'm typing what do you want i, I want to help you what do you want and then i was like dude, the only way this can go, he's not just going to beat Bart up again and leave. Like, this dude needs to do something that's going to change this show forever. Boom! Takes the flash ring, fights his dis or his ancestor, and right. finally is, like, one step closer to becoming the flash. So, yeah, writing it really helps, and sometimes it's a spur-of-the-moment thing, and I just type mm -hmm. it, and I go, hey, that works. I'm going to go with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the process, man. It's a... It's a a little bit of uh, me mental jousting, you know, yeah, <laughs> just going back sure. and forth on some some thoughts. Does this work? Does this, you know, does this hold water? Is this logical? Is this consistent with the lore we've written? That, that's like, there's a ton of forethought, but I think you've got a handle on it, man. It's it's working out great. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. And um, as, as far as, um, uh, I, I guess, what, uh, who, who would you like? You've had a bunch of of guests on the on the show lots of actors actresses 
even cosplayers, um, the Zoom costume off the chain yeah. looks really, really good. Oh, so cool. And um, who who would you like to work with on the Reverse Flash project? If you could think of anybody, pick someone, maybe a, a certain hero that you are knowing knowing of, anyone you'd like to maybe hopefully bring on. I would, well, there's like characters, character wise, the list is endless, but actor wise, I really want to work with Danny from Ismahawk. He did the Nightwing web series. Love yeah. that guy. Mad respect for him. He's our Batman Beyond voice, so I kind of worked with him, but I'd love like a scene okay. with him. But um, mm -hmm. that's like actor wise, I just respect the hell out of that guy. And um, I yeah. came to his house in Vegas and we just, I just picked his brain because he's a hero of mine. Uh, but for characters, I really would like to bring in um, Godspeed, and we're actually planning that for next episode. And then uh, yeah. I would like, oh my God. Uh, I have this idea where Oliver Queen comes to town, and he's just super suspicious of Eobard. He's like, so Barry's just missing, huh? You have nothing to do with that? You know, he's because he's like, he's a detective in his yeah. own right. So I think that'd be really fun, too. And we could play a bunch of, yeah. like, a bunch of Easter eggs for the CW show, but... Yeah, so actor wise, Danny, Danny Shepard, and then character wise, okay. I, yeah, I guess I guess Godspeed's my number one choice right now. I would love more girl power too, actually. I just don't know who. Yeah, yeah, that, that's awesome, dude. I, I'm I'm with you, man. I think those choices are really solid, um, and I, I I love the character of Godspeed. Uh, there was a lot of rumors going around that um, the crossover event might have, and this these were not credible, like they're not you know, val validated or verified or anything. It was pure rumor, um, but that CW might have been looking at um, Michael Rosenbaum to come in and play Godspeed. And I think it was fan spurred on, but I would have freaking died. I would have I know. lost my my mind. He's so great. He's my I, favorite character. Oh, you might love this story. I was, I was at an after party at this con, and it was like kind of like a private bar for the guests. And Michael mm -hmm. Rosenbaum was there, and he, I, I was sitting across the way, and I was like, oh, my God, it's Lex. What do I do? And then he looks at me and shoots a rubber band at me. And I'm like, hey, yeah, I'm calling. Nice to meet you. And then uh, he sits down. <laughs> We've been drinking. And he sits down at the piano. And he goes, Colin, what song do you want to hear? And I go, Piano Man. He goes, do you know the words? And I was like, I do. I'm just not a good singer. And he's like, Let's do it. And then so we sang Piano Man together right next to each other. All everyone circled around. It was just the best. And I, I that was like one of my favorite celebrity experiences. He's just a really oh, good dude. Oh, my gosh, dude. I, I'm probably going to when I upload this to YouTube, I'm going to export that story as its own video. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great, dude. Tag him in. I wonder if he'll remember. Oh, my gosh. I love I will. I'd love to. He, his, his podcast, uh, obviously for any of the younger listeners, um, it's a little more mature. So I, I keep my channel PG, you know, pretty PG, but, but his, uh, his podcast is freaking awesome. It's, it's hilarious. Rowing blew my mind. Yeah. That one was so, their behind the scenes stories were cracking me up. Yeah. So for the, younger people, whole don't watch it. But if you guys are a fan of Smallville or like anything Rosenbaum related, definitely check out his podcast. It is amazing. Especially oh my gosh! And he, yeah, dude, and he's one of the one of the best. Um, I, I think he he's one of the one of the best TV actors that is not getting roles right now. <laughs> yeah, well, <he laughs> like I'm like, where the heck is Rosenbaum? I don't know. It would be nice to see him as Lex, though. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I, I'm I'm hopeful that we'll get some more of that. James Gunn has him as. Um, uh, Martin X in the Guardians of the Galaxy. He was in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, but you wouldn't have seen him because his face was a CG face. Right. And uh, but he was in there. He even had like a, a couple. He had like two lines or something, and he was in the after credit as well. So um, he's in the MCU, but we're just waiting for James Gunn to take the Guardians to the next level and, and get some of that old school Guardians action. Yes, but I can't wait for that. Yeah, Rosenbaum, baby. <laughs> he, and he also is a huge Flash fan because he was the voice of Wally West in the Justice League animated series and Unlimited. Um, he was the Wally West Flash. And then I think he also played uh, – I can't remember who else he played. I think he played Barry in something, like like a different thing. I know, I know they, they modulated his voice and made him sound younger, and he did Kid Flash in the Teen Titans show. 
How about that was some really? Was that it? Yeah. That was the one? It was Rosen. Okay, that must voice. be what I'm thinking of. Yeah, and he was he dude. That's awesome. Flash. It was so cool when they did that. Yeah, that was great. And then he uh, randomly they just kind of filled him in for Deadshot in uh, Justice League Unlimited. That was him too. <laughs> Random, dude. <laughs> heck yes. Oh my gosh, I'm a big I'm a big fan of his. Obviously, I love the Flash too. I actually, dude, I want to show you. I don't think I showed you this yet. Yeah, I got that one too. Hey. Heck yeah, dude. That's awesome. Reverse Flash is the one from the CW. Love it. This one, dude, your guys' show is so legit. It actually looks it actually looks exactly exactly like the CW's Zoom yeah. and Reverse Flash. Thank you, man. And your Barry and the girl that you got, I don't remember her name, sorry, but the actress that plays Killer Frost. Oh, Lexi. spot on. Best. Yeah. She was I was like I, I double took at first because I was like, she looks so much like, um, like Danielle Panabaker for that uh, in that first shot in that initial shot. Right. Like I don't know if it was makeup or what, or if she just looks like exactly. I, I was no, like, she, whoa, dude, your guys' casting was pretty identical too to a lot of the characters that are mirrored. Yeah, we tried, and uh, Zoom just takes the cake on the costume for sure. But oh, Lexi, good. Lexi was great because I just hit her up to debut as Caitlin. And then we had such a good time together that the Killer Frosting was the next episode. And then in our scene together, we just had really great chemistry. So I was like, should this, like, be a thing? And she's like, yeah, I think it should be a thing. So then in that scene, it was really supposed to for me to be like, good to see you again, Frost, or something like that. But then we, like, got all, like, sexy with it. And we're like, it's good to see yeah. you again. <laughs> and we just <laughs> ran with it. And reverse Frost is, like, yeah. a hashtag now. So... <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Probably a lot of fun, too, to shoot, you know, give a different dynamic to that character that was a little sweet with, you know, he was sweet with his love, but then you get a different kind of dynamic when it's a villainous love relationship. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah. Lexi always jokes with me. She's like, you are too intense. I'm like, he loves you. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Hello, sir. Did you miss me? Yeah, of course I did, man. <laughs> It felt like an eternity, man. It was like the speed force was going in reverse. <laughs> so we want to, uh, we've talked a little bit now about um, your, your journey as an actor, as a writer, um, your experience um, in, in the fields of um, costuming, uh, your, your work with, you know, going to school, acting, uh, doing now having learned in the industry some effects and getting into production side of stuff with um, some of the, the stuff we didn't really talk about. Uh, Power Rangers Shattered Past we touched on a few times, but to be more direct into that, I want to ask you a couple questions. So if you could summarize Power Rangers Shattered Past for the listening audience, how would you, how would you uh, explain that for them? It's like Power Rangers, Legends of Tomorrow, and Terminator had a baby. <laughs> and that's Shattered Past. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't want that, man? That sounds like <laughs> It sounds like a dream come true. Right. It, it's pretty crazy. I was, uh, we were doing this episode, and it's really small, compact team because we just want to pump them out faster. But, like, right. there's, like, a heavy hit at the end of every episode. It's like, boom. And then you're like, oh. And then we're going to hop to different seasons. And, you know, it's going to be crazy fun and also totally made up. So it's going to be a blast. But, yeah. Um, yeah, when we were filming, I was like, Dude, this is nuts. I have, like, a full uh, White Ranger arm. I'm, like, not morphed, but I have, like, Saba and, like, armored on one arm. I'm looking at a Red Time Force Red Ranger. I'm looking at a Psycho Green, and I'm, like, talking to Saba, and I'm, like, this is the weirdest yeah. thing I've ever filmed. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy, man. I just I just binge-watched um, the entire uh, Time Force uh, show. Mm -hmm. uh, like, all, all the episodes. That was uh, last month. I just completed that, but I, I forgot how how epic some of those older series se seasons are i'm super grateful to netflix for keeping them all on their, their platform too yeah i did this thing where I, the disney era is my favorite but i just watched the uh beginning and ending of a few different seasons just to kind of like see so that when i'm writing shattered pass i know does this person still have their powers can i write this weapon in blah blah, blah. but it was so convenient right. just going on netflix and going okay i'm gonna watch all in Ninja Storm before I write First Ninja. Okay, I'm going to just watch RPM beginning and end because I want to bring in RPM into Shattered Pass and stuff like that. But, yeah, yeah. They, they had some real epic ones. Uh, Time Force was crazy at the end. They had, like, actual blood, and the city was blowing up. And 
he, yeah. uh, Wes gets two morphers and you just, yeah. He <laughs> <laughs> just went nuts on everybody. Yeah. And it's it's crazy too. Like I forgot that Time Force opens up with the death of a ranger. That's the whole premise. Yeah, yeah. And I think when they do do death in Power Rangers, it just hits home so much heavier because you don't expect that. So Right, yeah. yeah. Season. And it really set the tone for the uh the drama between um Aaron Cahill's Pink Ranger and and um uh, Jason Fount's character. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because he plays Alex and Wes, and then there's um, Jen. Right. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Yeah. I was I was blanking on her character name for a second. I was like, wait a minute, was it uh, Jess? Jen? I can't remember. <laughs> you got yeah, it. but um, so uh, do you have a favorite Power Ranger series, and do you have a favorite Ranger? Those don't have to be connected. The, yes, uh, they are for me. Uh, Connor McKnight and Dino Thunder. Those are just. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a really funny season with great character development. You get the OG uh, Tommy back in there. And mm -hmm. Connor, one, Connor's red, my favorite. He has super speed, also my favorite. And he just, like I was saying earlier, he goes from this, like, idiot jock to, like, a real leader throughout the season. Yeah. And it was just, he's my favorite to this day. And um, yeah. when Pua died, rest in peace, Pua, I really I know, wanted yeah. to take um, him – he was a great leader towards the end too. And I took that and kind of worked in things he said into Jackson's uh, script in episode two. So I hope the fans pick that up where he's like, he's, he's really uh, selfless. And Pua was just always so nice. I think, I think he had even uh, seen first ninja or a clip or something. Cause I saw him like one of our posts and uh, I was just like, I'm going to dedicate the rest of this show to him. And then I'm going mm. to make my character reflect his really good Red Ranger qualities. So, yeah, totally. Yeah. And he was, um, I think he was my second favorite Red Ranger uh, of all time. First? I really, I, 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 of course, like Austin St. John as, as Red Ranger. Um, and then uh, I also like TJ. Um, he was, he was legit turbo, but yeah, he's great. Uh, but also, uh, I think Pua was my – he was my second favorite right after Austin. And uh, I think part of it was just because the, the way that, like you have mentioned, the, the lore behind um, Ninja Storm is unlike any other. It goes back to – it really emphasized the martial arts training, the temples, and it had kind of a, a precursor to Avatar The Last Airbender type of feel. Yeah. And that – that was really, really powerful for me. I really like that. And it's impacted a lot of people in the same way. It really stood out. Yeah, agreed. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, this, this script for, for Shattered Past, what were the challenges bringing this to life? Um, well, I kind of only had one idea. And then I just, things just kind of built around that. I didn't really know how I was going to do it. I just was like, dude. The Omega Ranger, we never saw him unmorphed except for that one last scene. You know, it'd be cool mm -hmm. if you had to go back in time and stop Tommy from becoming Draken. And then that's all I yeah. really had. And then our effects guy, Golden, Midas Touch Art, very talented, very cool dude. He goes, mm -hmm. you know, what if, what if you could, like, access different uh, Ranger weapons through time or, like, shields or, like, weapons and stuff like that? And you, you don't necessarily – you can morph, but, like, the, the hook is like you're going through time grabbing these weapons and I was like what's that is brilliant dude like I love that so Saba was the first one I wanted because I thought it'd be interesting that Saba's like hey I'll help you stop Tommy from becoming Draken and so Sean and I went out one day and we filmed this video of me just running through a field and there's like explosions and stuff and then I got yeah. up and we're filming this like uh, I'm in like all black and a white shirt and I have like a beard and it's supposed to be like, oh, things are crazy. I'm like looking up at something. And then I was, yeah. like, I was like, what should it be when I like summon the weapons and stuff? And I was just kind of like messing around. And I go, Omega Access, Saba Saber. And we were like, that's cool. So then it all turned into this <laughs> kind of thing where we're like, all right, we can do anything we want. I can go, I can go grab a power saber or something. You know, I can go grab right. uh, the green dragon shield. I, I can do these things, go through time. Then from that mm -hmm. idea, that teaser we did, we got Dade involved, who had Time Force Red. And then my buddy Mark has Psycho Green. And so I just wrote the story around what I had. And that was like right. a challenge, but it was also a blessing because it was so unique. 
and uh, mm -hmm. it, it it just really worked out, and things just kind of kept happening. We had people volunteer, getting involved. Nerdiest came along, and then I had this idea: or what if I let the fans pick what next uh, timeline I go to? So like, yes, yeah. episode one comes out. There's this big heavy thing at the end. I can't say it. It's good. You're gonna love it though. It's time force related. Wink, wink. But heck yeah. <laughs> At, then for the next one, it's going to be me and Time Force Red going, okay, the next weapon we have to get is this, but I want the fans to choose it. And I think that would make it really special, too. That would be so sweet, man. Yeah. I, I'll, maybe I'll message you. I'll, I'll message you my, uh, my idea. For anyone who's listening, make sure to put in the comment uh, what, what you guys want to see as your next Power Rangers weapon that gets pulled in that, in that storyline, that series. Heck yeah. yeah. My, I think my vote is going to be the, uh, the, the Thunder Staff from uh, Ninja Storm. Hey, and that's doable, too. Those aren't, like, that won't break the bank. We can make that on our own. Yeah, that, I would love Heck that, yeah. too. Uh, we have a scene yeah. filmed. I don't know if it's going to make it, but I go back to the Ninja Storm timeline, and I, I, uh, it's called Omega Upload when I scan it, but I scan the mm -hmm. their actual Ninja Blade, so I'm going to have access to that maybe in Episode 2 or 3. Sick, dude. Heck yeah. <laughs> this sounds so this sounds so awesome. Like uh, Boom Studios has been doing so much great work with the comics. And right. uh, then, you you know, there's also like um, Bat in the Sun is trying to get their project off the ground. I did a lot of promo for that. I'm not involved with them directly. I'm just a fan. That, you know, when I see a project that I like to promote, I promote it, you know. And so Thanks, in that yeah. in that situation, um, they they were trying to get their uh, they had a Kickstarter because it was going to be a really expensive project. Jason David Frank was on it. Um, they had uh, Johnny on Bosch. Um, they had um, Ciara Hanna, you know, like tons of these uh, actual Rangers were involved in the project. And um, Jason Bount, Time Force, was on it too. Yeah. I did and, uh, The White Dragon. It was a great, great short. Yeah, dude. And I, I hope, I hope that they end up finding the funding for that down the road somewhere and doing that project. But um, yeah, if, if like uh, they make these awesome stories that are, not necessarily the main continuity, but you find that the comics or the fans or whoever it is, there's so much of this untapped lore that could exist, that should exist, that theoretically does exist based on what we know about the Power Rangers, the Morphin Grid, their universe, multiverse, whatever timelines. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I guess it's all, it's all possible with the Power Rangers. Right. And yeah. in that, in that way, it's like the childhood never dies with Power Rangers because that the imagination can just morph. To, to for Good lack of a less you know the most punny term ever but <laughs> but yeah and it's it's just so much fun man i really like that concept i love the idea of being able to go and get those those items those weapons because that's always one of the one of the developing points of every episode is that there's always something new either a person a weapon some sort of villainous plot character development that pushes that next episode even the exactly. filler episodes often will have a new weapon or a new thing, you know, Zord or something. Yep. And that's so right. that's really cool. It, Thanks, it sounds totally in line with actual Power Ranger lore. Thank you, man. Yeah, it'd be awesome if, like, I don't know, Boom Studios saw and, like, makes the Omega Ranger kind of look like me or something. That would be cool in the comments. Oh, don't, not, hey, who knows? Maybe eventually you might actually get cast as it. You never know, man. That's that's uh that's the dream is like you get the right eyes on these things and your life can change. So that's in the small scheme of things, that's what happened. We did a Green Arrow short, and that's what got Nerdbot interested in us. So it's like if if you get enough viewers, you know, the right eyes might land on you, and then things can just change drastically. So I think that's another reason why I do yeah. all these projects. You just never know what you're gonna throw it at the wall and see what sticks, right? Totally. Yeah, absolutely. And um. As far as um, uh, the the story, and I, I know that we we don't want to get too much into like details because of spoilers. But what is going to, without spoiling, what is going to surprise people about this show? Um, I think the like ranger knowledge. Like I I dove really deep for this the the big ending scene. I did a lot of yeah. research. Dade Dade and I hashed stuff out. We talk about our characters. Uh, I not not too much lately but when we were like brainstorming this we we each designed like how our characters would dress when they're not morphed uh different 
weapons that can still make sense. We're naming different things. Like all these things are kind of just because we love the show so much. So what I'm going to surprise people with is we're, they're going to see things that they're never that like that, that never been done before, but also they're going to be like, wow. Oh, okay. He's referencing that one picture from that one episode of that one season, you know? And I think people, yeah. will, the Ranger fans will really dig that. Like, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm gonna, when we end, I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. And I think you're going to dig it. The secret at the end. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm a hundred percent on board with the after party, dude, <laughs> all day. <laughs> um, what, okay. So then, um, uh, I would, I would maybe a more personal related question to the show, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, who on the show is most like their character? Well, uh, I don't know because we don't really know much about these characters. Like, yeah. um, I never, I never said who Time Force Red was, you know? I never said that, like, we don't know what well, they're going to do in the comics. We don't know who was under the Psycho Green mask. And me personally, right. all we know is the, the quippy Omega Ranger that never, you know, demorphed in SPD. So we all have a lot of freedom. True. And I think that's what's going to make this show special too, is we're all kind of designing these characters and, uh, we were filming this team up scene where where uh, me and Time Force Red go <laughs> and we like blast at Psycho Green, and then I yeah. improv this line with Dave uh, before the team up. We had practiced it, practiced it, and then I'm like, "Hey, how about a Time Bros team up?" And then he was like, "I thought you'd never ask." And we like now we have this whole thing. Yeah, we're Time Bros now. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. like things like that allow us the freedom, and I think that we got we get to create those characters ourselves. Yeah, that's so cool, man. I, that that sounds like such a blast to be able to like shoot and film and t and even just the the process of talking about it, geeking out while you're creating. Oh yeah, it sounds like a, a full on field day of fandom. Yeah, Dade and Mark, my my co stars in this first episode, they know their stuff. I was like, I thought I knew my stuff. My brain doesn't remember much important stuff, but like nerdy trivia, it's all up here. And so we're going back right. and forth. We're like, yeah, I remember that one episode in SPD where Sam was a little kid and he like teleported things. Like, yeah, you can teleport things. I'm like, oh yeah, you know. So things like that. Yeah. It's, it's just really great. We can all nerd out, and then you know, next second we're like, all right, you ready? And we like go and fight. And I, I did a really cool. I hope it's really cool. I haven't seen it, but I did a really cool fight scene uh, against the uh, right. Psycho Green, and I, I can't wait to see it. So I hope it's good. <laughs> Dude, I got really sweaty. I Oh yeah, for sure. I bet. And if you if you filmed that all this summer, I mean, it was like it was a flipping heat wave out here, and yeah, we my... we kind of cry about it in California because it it doesn't get as hot as a lot of places. But yeah. I mean, it can get pretty warm out here. Yeah, and and like those super suits or like the SPD jacket I have and stuff, it's just there's no breathing room. So, but I'll it's bet, all man. worth it. No complaints here. It's all worth it. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, who has? Who do you think has the best costume? Ooh, I really, really like the Dino Charge, like, shoulder platelet. That's, yeah. like, a, the, as a team uniform, I think they just look awesome. But I'm a yeah. big fan of how the Crimson Thunder Ranger looks. I think he's yeah. just the dopest dude. The Crimson's, like, my favorite color, too. So yeah. Quick, quick story. It was actually, we were actually going to do, First Ninja was going to be about the Thunder Academy, and I was going to play the first Crimson Ranger. But then I yeah. thought that was too similar to Reverse Flash Origins when I'm the guy playing a potential bad guy. So then I was right. like, oh, and if I know a little kid Colin, he'll want me to be the Red Ranger. So we switched it and made it the beginning of the Wind Ninja Academy. That's actually, that's amazing. My favorite is uh, Blake. I like oh, the cool. Navy Ranger. Yeah, yeah he's, I, he's my all time favorite. Yeah, the horns growing up. And that's why, that's why the item I want is the Thunder Staff because both of them have it. Yeah. But that one, like, to me, um, their their relationship dynamic and then the way that they tied back to the first three, the yellow, red, blue, you know, him and Tori, Blake and Tori. Yeah. Um, that whole, like, storyline for me, I was wearing the, the Navy Rangers outfit we bought online, like, every day of my life. I, like, oh, growing up, I was, like, as soon as it came out, I think, was that 2004 or something? Yeah. And, like, from then, I think I wore it for a straight year and a half. Like, That's awesome. I would wear it. I would wear it around the house. I'd wear it to play outside. I would wear it to bed. Like the thing was dirty all right. the time. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's what, when we love the Rangers, uh, you, you, 
you'll see in episode two of First Ninja, uh, our Navy Ranger morphs for the first time. And it's a really, really cool scene because she was kind of like the bad girl in, in uh, episode one. And she right. kind of like, kind of just it talks about redemption. And then she, and then boom, she gets her morpher. And she's like, what do I do with this thing? And then I felt very cool saying this. I wrote it, but I, I felt very cool. I go, just follow my lead. Maybe add a little <laughs> thunder. Ready? And then we do this morph, like synchronize morph together. Boom, and then we, it, it's going to be awesome. You're going to dig it. We did a girl That's Navy so Ranger, so I think it'll be really cool. I saw that. I, I saw one. I think it's the first episode is, is on your um, uh, Crimson Vision Studios on yes. YouTube. And, uh, dude, I I was losing my mind because that was that was my jam. That's my favorite. Ninja Storm is my favorite. I mean, my, Mighty Morphin in that one. Right. Pretty much on the same level. I'm really digging Beast Morphers right now, like the okay. new one. Really liking that. But they they have uh, – yeah, for me, Ninja Storm is, like, is the greatest of all time. I love – that and so when you went there and you had the 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 thunder rangers uh there oh my gosh dude and they're all losing it i was losing it <laughs> that's awesome i want them to make funko pops for that yeah yeah they're, they're, that's the thing too about nerdy is they were the first people i found with ninja storm uh product so like when i saw this hat i hit them up immediately and i was like i don't care what it takes i want to work with you guys because that's awesome that you're doing this and then I got myself, um, I have this thing I do, anytime I play a live action character, I get myself like a memento of that character. It's usually like a figure or something. Right. So I got uh, the CV illustrations, uh, Ninja Storm red pin, and then also the figure arts, um, Ninja Storm red, the one with like all the mobility and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so heck yeah. Those little mementos, but if there's ever a fun cup pop, I'm totally getting it too. <laughs> Dude, all day, dude. I'll buy the whole series. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, I'll have to spread it out. I don't want to break the bank or anything. Yeah. One. But, uh, you know, just I'll invest over time. Um, as far as uh, uh, you said, your favorite ranger of all time is Connor McKnight. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, how far into, uh, into, filming, uh, in, into filming are you? I mean, how, how far along in the project – are you guys, because you guys obviously work ahead of the release schedule. That's the way that this thing yeah. goes, how time works. Um, part two, it's kind of like my episode. The Part one was Danny's episode. That's why it's called Earth. Yeah. And this one's more about me kind of like stepping into the leadership role. And I kind of unite the Thunder people with us. I don't want to give too much away. But, For sure. Um, For sure. It, 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 it's it's done. Like filming's done. There's one pickup shot I want to do, but if it doesn't happen, it's okay. But that's done, and it's all just post production now. But that takes takes the longest. And right. Uh, a lot of so editing. I, yeah, exactly. And we have a great team. Sean does a, a lot of it, and Golden does the effects, and then our buddy Jake does the music. So it's it's a it's a big process. But the the hard the filming is done, and um, now it's all post production. But we decided to release. Shattered Past episode one first because it would take less time. So to answer your question, I don't know how far we are in, but I know we have a lot done already. Now it's just all the post production stuff. Okay, so you've shot you've shot quite a bit. It's just yeah. waiting for that release schedule. Exactly. So we'll have a Shattered Past trailer soon, from what I hear. Awesome, dude. I'm I'm waiting for it. I'm subscribed to everything you do. Thanks, man. <laughs> I would encourage everybody follow him on his social media because he's blasting about these projects whenever it's coming up. And you guys were just at um, fan, what was it, uh, Nerd Expo? Yeah, we just did a con Nerd Expo. And that's kind of like, I call it like our Super Bowl because it's like full of people that watch our stuff because it's a nerd bot run con. So they get right. panels, they hang banners and we, we know a lot of people there. <laughs> and it's just a really special event. Awesome, man. And you guys, you had a lot of announcements because you guys had a panel of course at nerd expo mm -hmm. and you were announcing a number of things um and what, what were some of those things that you guys uh talked about at the expo maybe for those who weren't able to make it to the event um uh, with reverse flash origins we've, we've we've done quite a few panels there because you know nerd is why rfo exists so it was a lot of right. fun, just like behind the scenes stuff, because a lot of people already watched the show. We just played a trailer, and then we we, we let uh, our moderator like ask us just kind of funny things we don't really say 
too often. And then our plans, like our dreams, kind of like what you're asking. And then for sisterhood, it was a lot of like uh, just plans for the future. And um, uh, th to put it like delicately, there was some worry that uh, about female representation in this series. And I just made it very clear that I'm not I'm not going to like shove it down anyone's throat like like I think Batwoman does. I think it's a little too much how they're just like, I won't get into it. Basically, what I said, it's all going to be equal, yeah. and we're going to show you with our actions that these women are powerful and awesome. You know, right? And that, that it's was a show. Point. Don't tell. Is that exactly? And I I don't like how um, Batwoman kind of like puts men down in their script. I just said right. we're all going to we're all going to be equal. We're all going to be badass. We're all going to have our issues too, and it's just it's it's not even worth. It's not even worth forcing down people's throats, you know? So uh, that was the yeah. one thing we talked about. And then also just plans for characters and um, how I see my character. And it, lots of lots of really fun, like, uh, behind the scenes, like, script-based stuff that I don't get to talk about very much. So it was really fun. Totally, man. And I, you know what? I think that was well said, what you said about, about Batwoman, because it's, it's something that when, in, in today's day and age, there's a lot of people that can get very upset about what, one way or the other, right? Like for instance, in, in, from a personal um, perspective point of view, I do a lot of fan casting on my channel, but I, I typically don't do any gender bent castings. Mm -hmm. A lot of fan casters do and I follow them and I, I like their stuff. I'll say, hey, that's awesome. I think that person is great for a gender bent role. And I think Sisterhood Arrow is a great idea, but it's, I think because again, like you said, the trailer shows us that it's going to show, not tell, exactly. that, that, um, that women have a place in comics. They always have had a place in comics. We love that kind of stuff. Every, men and women, we all like that kind of stuff. But we don't like to be preached at for things that people think are a hang-up we might have. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not something that's necessary. It's not something that is, um, is even an issue, really. It's something that I think a lot of people – that maybe are on the outside edge of the fandom think is might be an issue, and so they become vocal about it. But I like I like what I'm seeing from the Sisterhood Arrow trailer. It's really encouraging to hear you say that, um, being involved with the project directly. And uh, yeah, dude, I'm excited. I'm gonna be watching that totally. Um, I'm I'm really I'm really encouraged to hear that because I am one of those I'm one of those people that sympathizes with what you were saying about Batwoman. It felt like it was disrespecting not only the male fans, but men in general, and specifically Batman. It was just unnecessary. Just, it know, was unnecessary. Yeah, I think if they just had Ruby Rose play a really strong, cool character that we all liked, and she was just like, yeah, I'd love that suit. Thank you. <laughs> you know, not like it right. needs to be made for a woman. Like that is just a little, in my, in my opinion, as a writer and as like a fan, it's just a little too much, and I think it's unnecessary. And so for yeah. sisterhood, it's going to be it's going to be more about like just writing and acting as characters you care about, and that's really at the end of the day. And everyone's going to have their strengths and weaknesses, just like in real life. Exactly, I love that man, and I I, I do think that Ruby Rose is a great choice for Batwoman. I, I feel honestly, I feel bad for her um, because she's not the one that's writing these lines. She's not the one that's writing these scripts, and I hope she's not taking too much heat for, for that. I hope that her show goes well. Yeah, um, I'll probably check it out. I'll probably check out the first couple episodes. If it's anything like the trailer, I'll probably not continue. Yeah, we'll all but, try it, especially for the crossover. Yeah, yeah, for the crossover at least, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I have no qual Now that you've put that to rest, I have absolutely no qualms. And based on the trailer, I didn't have that worry or issue whatsoever anyway. Thank so, you, but it's, it's just extra nice to hear someone involved with the project come out and, and say that, that it's going to be a show, not tell strong women. Yes, exactly. Perfect way yeah. to put it. Yeah. Awesome, dude. And um, so we, we have Sisterhood Arrow coming up. Um, I had seen a, and this, this may be something that um, is, uh, is a, again, a spoiler. I know there's a lot of these, about, uh, about these projects. You can't necessarily unveil or reveal right now, mm -hmm. but there is someone that I think we both know that may or may not be involved with a project coming up soon. I don't know if I, if I even should ask for the, it, for the public. Are you talking about Amber? Yeah. 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 We can say that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, want, I want Amber and everything, man. Um, I, yeah. I, I really liked her online persona. I like how she pushed 
so hard for uh, Batgirl. And, yeah. And um, then I met her in person and she's just so bubbly and welcoming. And I've seen her like acting just in like clips and stuff she's posted, very talented. And I, mm. I'm, I'm all girl power, you know, I, I, I want more girl power. It's just hard to do some castings. Yeah. For whatever reason, it's just a little more challenging. I guess more boys want to run around in superhero costumes, but she's going to yeah. join us. And uh, I got plans for her in RFO, Sisterhood, and uh, Shattered Paths. So, like, oh my um, goodness, I I got plans. I don't know how they'll work, but I definitely, definitely am excited. And she's going to join the Nerdbot family for sure. Dude, awesome. Well, you guys have heard it first here. <laughs> yeah. I'm super excited. For anyone who may not know who Amber is, Am it's Amber Myers, or you can find her on Instagram at Amber Ever. And she is campaigning for the role of Batgirl, and she has officially gotten involved here with Colin the Blur, or rather Colin Bass yeah. um, at NerdBot. So that's really exciting news. I can't wait to see more of that and see what you guys are going to do on all of these different platforms. Um, man, dude, this is, this is like a really, really exciting, really exciting interview. I'm like, I'm losing it. I can't wait. There's so much, <laughs> Thanks, man. so much to look forward to. Cause I'm, I happen to be a fan of literally everything you're creating, you know, like Power Rangers, um, all kinds of Power Rangers and, uh, specifically Ninja Storm and, you know, uh, Reverse Flash. I'm just all across the board and Sisterhood Arrow, of course, that's new content based on content that I clearly love. So yeah, just losing, it's a good dude. time to be a nerd, man. It's a good time to be a nerd. It's a fantastic time to be a nerd. <laughs> Absolutely. Never better, in fact. It's it's only gotten greater and greater, and there's a much bigger need now than ever for this kind of content. You know, like, yeah. DC, Marvel's got, you know, up there, obviously owned by Disney, platform where they're going to push out probably eight to eight to ten TV series alone in the next five years. Mm -hmm. You know, and then uh sev countless movies as well yeah. but also you got dc creating original content on their streaming service and there's rumors of other platforms uh creating more content there bat in the sun's been working with uh uh what's the is it I'm, I'm sorry it's not image comic what's the other one that does valiant valiant, valiant. comic yeah yeah valiant. Valiant. they did valiant ninja in the valiant universe um lots of lots of great content and then now you guys are tackling a lot of these so, uh, these projects as well with Power Rangers fan content and then also with DC fan content. I could not be happier at Thanks, this man. point in time. It, that gets me so hyped, dude. Thank you. I'm glad you like it and watch it. Absolutely, dude. And um, and so you had, uh, uh, again, to recap, there's you've got four series ongoing right now. Mm -hmm. There's first Power Rangers First Ninja. Um, Power Rangers Shattered Past, Sisterhood Arrow, and Reverse Flash Origins, correct? Yes, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's a ton, dude. That's a lot of content. I'm really grateful that you are working on um, these things. And I think um, if I had if I had one more question to ask you would be outside of of the the content that you're actively working on right now. Mm -hmm. Do you have maybe any plans you are okay to talk about for some other projects? I've always wanted to dive into the Marvel world. We just, when we've done it, we they haven't been very successful. So we kind of just mm -hmm. moved on. We did Star-Lord. We did a full like Marvel Guardians where it's like Iron Man, Deadpool, Star-Lord, and um, Doctor Strange. And it, was, it was a lot of fun, but like, I think we just, DC empowering is what people want to see from us. But right. I'd really like to do something uh, with Cyclops. I'd like to play Cyclops or maybe be his brother or something and dive into. I thought it was really interesting how Mr. Sinister was obsessed with that Summer's DNA. There's something special about it. And I don't really know the whole story on that. And that, that's what I like. I like telling untold stories. So, yeah, it, the, to answer your question, would be a Cyclops short. I think it would be yeah. really cool. Dude, you are speaking my language. I, I think you and me probably would have been best friends growing up. <laughs> yeah. Like all of the stuff that you like, I like. And, and like Cyclops is one of my most, I, Iceman's my favorite, but Cyclops <laughs> is my second favorite mutant. I absolutely love Cyclops. He was, I mean, I, I appreciate the iterations that have happened up till now, but none of them have done him justice in live action so far. 
he, yeah, he he's got, so underappreciated. Exactly. He's a he's a great leader, kind of a jerk, but a really great leader. And they 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 kind of did it for one scene in the Phoenix movie, the most recent Phoenix movie, where Cyclops yes. blasts his blast, uses it to hit a mirror, and then the mirror hit like a late like that's the kind of Cyclops we should have been having this whole time. And exactly. I think it's really interesting that like you know all the summers DNA there there's something about them that like makes them an extra special mutant you know and uh yeah it was this in the civil war comics with with x-men um juggernaut is like trying to blast through this door and colossus is trying to and no one can do it and then cyclops comes up he takes off his visor and it goes boom and his whole body lights up in a red beam and just goes boom, yeah and it's like blasting and then someone yep. some x-men is like scanning it and they're like is he okay is he gonna survive and they're like scanning like that's only a third of his power. And I was like, what? This guy's awesome. So, yeah, yeah. I'd love to dive into that for sure. It's amazing because um, Cyclops, like like you said, we, we've we never seen his fullest potential. He is he's one of the most un underrated, underappreciated, most powerful mutants for what he does. Obviously, he's kind of a one-trick pony as far as powers goes, but it's it's – literally the power of the sun you know well, him and it, super it's concussive force though you know what i mean yes like, it is so he can do they never use that like i always thought like let's say cyclops is falling whoa couldn't he like technically use his concussive force blast it and kind of slow his descent i always thought that'd be a really cool scene but instead yeah. it's just like i just blast lasers and like they never really used it except for that one scene from phoenix but yeah definitely so Long yeah. answer, but that is what I want to do is Cyclops when all this kind of I, calms down. I totally agree, man. I would love to see in, in live action the like Cyclops like needing to get on top of a building and then just like jumping and blasting the floor beneath him and just I would love that too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> grabbing onto the edge, you know. So it would be so fun. Getting creative with the powers because that was one of the things about the X Men. I think maybe you probably um, feel similar about. I think one of the only there's the 90s X-Men TV series, which is, of course, one of the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. And then X-Men Evolution, well, I feel, got cool. Cyclops right. Yeah. You know, X-Men yeah. Evolution really showed Cyclops to be not only the leader that the team deserved and needed, but as as a character, he saw he saw development with not only his relationship with Gene, which was finally appropriately done yeah. on screen. Yeah. Where it wasn't it wasn't Wolverine and Gene, that's not a thing. And, you know, she's not some cheating, you know, horrible lady that would just ditch him for some other dude. Yeah. You know, they're, they they're meant triangle. to be. Yeah. I, yeah, that, that love triangle was unnecessary. And it was supposed to be something that was just, I guess, uh, a hinge in, in the Dark Phoenix saga to show how much the Phoenix took over and that it wasn't Gene. It was to emphasize that it wasn't Gene. It was the Phoenix mm -hmm. taking over why she would leave Cyclops for another. That okay. was supposed to emphasize that, but the the films were like, oh, everyone loves Wolverine. Let's just make this this love triangle, and it was Brian Singer that kind of just said, "Screw Cyclops." <laughs> I know. I was like, forget that noise. You know, it's Cyclops, man. He's he's a, he's the man, and uh, I feel like he needs to be played by someone that could similarly play uh, Superman. They have a very similar physique and look in the comics, just slightly, just different hair color. Yeah, pretty much the same idea, like broad shoulders, tall. You know, like yeah. I could Boy that. Scout. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm i totally down. Yeah, I, I agree. I'd, whoever they cast next better be awesome. That's all I have to say. Yeah, or you do it. <laughs> or I'll do it. I'll do it, man. Let me get both yeah. real quick. Heck yeah, dude. This has been a wonderful interview. Um, I want to make sure that before we close out that we get a chance to plug all of your media. Um, what is it that you are working on now that you would like to promote? Do you have pages up for these things on social media? Um, the floor is yours, my friend. Yeah, uh, I, I'm pretty vocal on my Colin the Blur page. Uh, that's where I kind of share everything, and I'm pretty good about tagging who we're working with and what pages are what. But if you want to see what I personally do, Colin the Blur has everything, and then the link in my bio will take you to Reverse Flash Origins. But I believe the next thing we're releasing is uh, a teaser we only showed at Nerd Expo, and that's for Sisterhood Arrow. Um, right. I wrote it and Jess made of might is starring in it and it's it's very simple but it's very cool and like sets up the the universe a little bit 
And then after that is Shattered Past, which I'm very excited about. And I hope all you Ranger nerds love it and it turns into something special. And then the rest yeah. of it's all uh, like everything else we've been talking about, but you can always find the information on Colin the Blur or shoot me a direct message if you want a link and I'll gladly send it to you. Excellent. Well, hey, thank you so much, Colin, for coming out, uh, for being part of this interview, this two-part interview. Yeah. Uh, got a lot of time together and I'm really grateful for that. It was so fun. Um, geeking out with you about all these projects that you're working on and the fandoms they're based on. I, it's just been such a, a great time hanging with you, brother. Right back at you, man. Thank you so much. And you are an awesome guy, and I hope you keep hustling. I wish you the absolute best. I think you and I are going to be really good friends. Absolutely, dude. Thank you. You got a friend in me. <laughs> right back at you, man. Hope you have a great night, dude. Thanks, brother. Take care. God bless. Right back at you. Bye, bud. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend, and we have that in common. Also, be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legends.